Hi, Kyle. Hi, Wiley. Thank you for signing books at our booth at ALA Midwinter. My pleasure. It was so much fun. It it was great to debut the Max and Friends series. So I'd like you to tell everyone a little bit about how the Max and Friends series came to be. So it's funny. I have another picture book about a trans boy called When Aiden Became a Brother through Lee and Lowe. And the first Max book is actually very close to the very, very first draft of Aiden, which I first wrote almost four years ago. Um, And then when we talked about writing an early reader series, I thought, what if I took that very first draft that I still felt very attached to, Mm -hmm. and I adjusted it so that it was an early reader instead of a picture book? And the second two books came from there. They just came from Max and his little friends and me thinking about what he would do with his friends after his initial coming out is mostly settled. Right. It's just a fun adventure series with a a group of friends, the kinds of kids all kids would like to hang out with. Exactly. So why Raycraft Books? How did you get connected with Raycraft Books? So, I mean, you know the answer to this I question, <laughs> but I went to my first and only event through uh, SCBWI, the Society of Children's Books, Writers and Illustrators. Illustrators. Right. I knew that. Um, and I sat, I was sitting down and I wasn't really talking to anyone because I'm kind of shy. And then I think I said something. I must have said something. I don't know what I said. But the next day I got a direct message on Twitter from yourself. Yeah, I basically stopped you. Yeah, sure. Um <laughs> And you told me that you were working with a new imprint, and would I be interested in coming by and talking through ideas with you? Right. So it was all because I went to a meeting and was on Twitter. Right. And at the meeting, you had talked about one of your picture books that you were trying to sell. Um, And so I was very curious to see that. And then you came to the office, and we brainstormed uh, some ideas. And so I think people were very curious about how books come to be. And there are lots of lots of different ways. And I had seen you on Twitter because I you're one of the librarians I had followed. I was like, I recognize the face. So sorry for stalking you. Oh, it it worked out. It all worked out in the end. (laughs) It did. It did good. So Raycraft Books focuses on publishing books by authors and illustrators from underrepresented groups. So can you talk a little bit about your connection to the Max and Friends series? Yeah. So Max is transgender in the same way that I am. Um, I came out when I was much older. I didn't know that I was trans until I was already in college. And Max is like five or six years old. So there's that difference. But I think it's really important to be an openly trans person writing books for kids so that all kinds of kids can see that no matter who they are, they can grow up to be writers and artists and just adults in the world where that part of their identity isn't something they have to hide. It's not something they have to be ashamed of. And it's also not something that they have to get over or get past or overcome. It can be something that is just a larger part of their life that influences who they are but doesn't dictate who they have to be. Right. right. So I know, th- I want to talk a little bit about the book specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when you send in the manuscript for the first book, Call Me Max, one of the reasons why I contacted you right away that we wanted it is it made me cry. And it, it made me cry because I felt like I was listening to a six or seven year old pour out his soul. And you have this beautiful way of capturing that. And I want everyone to listen to you read the beginning of chapter two, because one of the things that's so beautiful about your writing is you have all these layers of emotion going on in your scenes. And it's it's deceptively simple. And I want people to hear uh, these first two pages when Max goes to school the first time. Nobody knows that he identifies as being a boy. And this is what happens. So will you read that from the first book? Yeah. So... I can even hold it open and read like this. Can I do this? Is sure. This okay? Uh, so chapter two. On the first day of school, the teacher called out our names. Emery, here. Stella, me. I raised my hand when she got to my name. She looked at me, and then back at the list of names, and then back at me again. I wondered if she thought my name didn't make sense for me. I felt that way, too. Can you call me Max? I asked. Max is the boy in my favorite book. She nodded and wrote it down. I won't tell you what my old name was. That's private. There's so much in this one spread. The teacher's instant acceptance. She just nods. She's not, it's not didactic. She's not trying to teach a lesson. She just has a a raw human emotion about that. And for me, reading it as Max, the range of emotions he probably felt, maybe a little fear, 
he certainly was very brave in that moment. There, there's just so much going on. So I think it's very special. Now, I am in love with book two. <laughs> this is <laughs> my favorite. This is one of my favorite things ever. I love and it's this. with his best friend, Stephen. I want his best friend, Stephen. And I want to be friends with Stephen. I just, he is... <laughs> He is one of the characters that I, that I just, I, I'm so happy that we have books with Stephen in this world. But what I love about this book, there's a lot that goes on, but it really at its heart is this really sweet friendship story. And there is a picture in the back that I want you to show everyone that captures the heart of this book. And you can talk about the book after you show this, but it's just Max and Stephen with their arms around each other at this sort of traumatic event that happens to them. So tell me a little bit about Stephen and this book. Um, so this book, Max and the Talent Show, is about, it's not so much about Max, it's more about his little friend Stephen, and Stephen wants to be in the talent show. And first he makes sure that he has the perfect dress, and the perfect tiara, and the perfect shoes, but he doesn't think about another very important part of being in the talent show, and that's where the main climax comes at the end. And I wanted to write a story about a little boy who wants to wear a dress, where that is not the problem. Absolutely. Um... I based this book a little bit on, so I'm basically Max in the story. I'm the helpful one. I like to help my friends. And Stephen is both based on a friend of mine named Stephen, but then also a lot of my other friends who are very similar to Stephen. Okay, great. Yeah. So this fall, you went on a, a book tour and you were promoting When Aiden Became a Brother, mm -hmm. which was your picture book that came out last year, got all these starred reviews, all this recognition. It was super exciting to see. And you were posting some things that were happening during this tour. And one of the things that really struck me was that you had mentioned some of the schools that you went to before you were able to speak to the, the classrooms, letters were sent home to the parents. And some children were withheld from those classrooms. So I'm very curious about your thoughts about that, what you would say to those children who weren't included in your talk or to their parents. Well... First, before what I would say to those kids and their families, the first is that sometimes people would share that with me, that there would be families who pulled their children from my program. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it would be phrased in almost a congratulatory way, like, oh, only two or three families decided to, to remove their kids. Like, that's a good thing, that only two or three families. And it's hard for me to express gratitude that there are families in a community who see my presence as a direct threat to the well-being of their children. I do not care what the number is. Yeah. The knowledge that that exists is not something that I feel grateful for. Um, I wouldn't say anything particularly special to those children because it's not their fault. And I know that I've never met a child who has a problem with trans people. The kids that I've met have uniformly been open and accepting and caring and thoughtful. To the parents, I don't know if I would choose, I, it's hard to choose to speak to people who see you as a direct threat to the well-being of their children on the basis of who I am and what, yeah, just of who I am. Um, but I would encourage them to read my books and to think deeply about why they see my books as a problem. And I would ask them to look inside themselves and look at what are they afraid of? Because at the core of that is fear. They're afraid of something mm -hmm. and i don't know what that is i do not know where that fear comes from and i would like them to think a little bit more about what precisely they're afraid of yeah thanks so i want you to talk a little bit about what's next for you including the oh. third book in the max and friends series yeah. but other exciting things i know that's happening so the third book in the max series is called Max on, on the, the farm. farm. Max right. on the farm. And so the first book is about Max, and we meet his two friends, Stephen and Teresa. The second book is Max and Stephen. And the third book is Max and Teresa's Time to Shine. Right. And Teresa is very rough and tumble and very adventurous. And Max is still kind of shy and meek. Um, but they go on an adventure together. And I love that story. Yeah. Um, I have another picture book coming out from Groundwood about poetry. It's called Explosion at the Poem Factory. And then my next big project comes out in... Uh, 2021, and it's a middle grade novel from Dial Books at Penguin okay. Random House um, mm -hmm. called Live With That. And I'm very excited for that. Does that one. have LGBTQ it content? It sure does. <laughs> so share with everyone your first picture book also, because that's oh. been out for a while. Oh, my first picture book came out in May of 2018, and it's called The Storytelling of Ravens. Yeah. 
And it's about collective nouns. And it's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you, Kyle. Thanks, Wiley. <laughs>